your attack surface, a vast digital frontier, expanding at breakneck speed. Do you have a grip on its evolution? We're here to help. What's going on, Hacker Valley fam? Welcome back to the show. Do you remember back before the 2010s, things were simple. We had a server closet that housed all of our computing power and your employees, they couldn't take data home with them because they all didn't have laptops. Fast forward to today, we have more computing power in our pocket than we did all those years ago. Our phones, watches, laptops, they travel with us just about everywhere. And these assets are connected to the same application and data that your company uses. The truth is, it's unlikely that we can reduce the attack surface because we're adopting more technology and applications than ever before. What we can do though, is we can reduce the exposures that open the door to those breaches. Randori's latest findings pulled back a little bit of the curtains for us and let us know that 67% of organizations saw their attack surface grow just last year. And we're at a staggering 69% of those compromises were due to unmanaged assets. So here's another figure for you to think over. In that same report by Randori, they also showed that only 9% of companies can confidently say that they monitor their entire attack surface. To be a part of this exclusive group that has the level of confidence of knowing their entire attack surface, you must first know which attack surfaces your organization may be exposed to. Let's review each attack surface. The first one is the one that we know best. It's the traditional attack surface. It's endpoints and servers. Not only is this the most common type of attack surface to manage, it's also typically the first priority. The devices that your users are using are the most essential to address for most organizations. If you manage the traditional perimeter, it'll become easier to manage all the others. The next perimeter is the modern perimeter. This is mobile devices, identity, applications, and websites. The modern perimeter really made us think differently about how we access our technology. In most situations today, your organization's email server is likely not owned by you, it's not in the DMZ, and in fact, it's probably publicly accessible and you allow your users to pull email from their mobile devices. This makes it even more important to inventory some of the context and details about which devices are accessing which email accounts. This is gonna help you spot anomalies in user behavior specifically. What complicates things even more though is identities contain roles or attributes. A single identity could be a user, it could be a group that has access to a variety of applications, endpoints, and data. After the pandemic, it became clear that firewalls aren't just the only gatekeeper that we can rely on. Today, we live in a cloud-first world, which takes us to the expanding perimeter. It's not just the systems that serve our customers that we need to protect, it's also our brand reputation. We use more tools than ever before. We use tools for recording our meetings, posting on social media, and there's more third-party applications than I can count. Having an unmanaged social account or newsletter can be catastrophic if someone compromises that account and uses those platforms to post on our behalf. Now, before we get lost in all of the doom and gloom, I'm here to share with you that you can combat all of this by breaking down attack service management into use cases. There are three major categories for attack service management. The first one is CASM, which stands for Cyber Asset and Attack Service Management. Think of this category as internal attack service management. A really great CASM use case that I've seen is visibility gap analysis. This use case helps answer the question of, is my monitoring solutions deployed to all of my assets? The next category is EASM, which stands for External Attack Surface Management. As the name implies, this category is for understanding which assets are publicly accessible. EASM can really help you understand what the attacker sees, which vulnerabilities are they gonna have opportunities to exploit. The last use case is Digital Risk Protection Services. This is usually a managed service that enables you to observe and protect a variety a physical and digital risks. You can look at this as not only protecting your brand, but also protecting your data, assets, and executives. 
we've covered a variety of attack surfaces and also categories to understand and make sense out of all of this. It's important that you pick the right tool and team for the job. My recommendation would be to check out NetSpy. NetSpy not only has the attack surface management solution, they also have a team of consultants that can help you quickly understand which sensitive assets are exposed to threats and how to remediate. Attack surface management is a continuous process. Having a partner like NetSpy can help your team stay productive by enabling them to adopt the tools that they need while also ensuring that you are minimizing risks and exposures. More to come in the next video in the series, and we'll see everyone next time.